Hey basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about how you can play like Kyle Lowry of the Toronto Raptors. This is a video if you're a point guard or your guard that you're not going to want to miss and there's some secret tips right at the end of this video that I know are going to make you a better basketball player so stay tuned. Okay so number one, the one thing that sets Kyle Lowry apart from the rest of the guards in the NBA is his defense. His defense is bar none one of the best skills that he has. Now you're probably saying okay well no matter what it's the NBA if he's guarding a good player they're going to score and that's true that's 100% true you're always going to get scored on no matter how good of a defender you'll ever be however some of the tips that Kyle Lowry has or what he does that sets him apart is number one he's not going to be the quickest but he's going to be the strongest and if you're the same type of player where okay your foot speed is not that great you can work on that but if you can work on your upper body strength like Kyle Lowry has and there's a lot of fans from other teams who say ah he's fat he's actually not he's actually extremely strong he does a lot of bench press he does a lot of shoulder raises a lot of shoulder presses and those type of exercises helps him be able to defend the low post as a guard now in the low post one of the things that he does you're not going to need the ball right now because of course we're on defense we're trying to get that ball back so in the low post one of the things that he does is he uses his upper body strength and also uses his legs to get lower leverage on that offensive player he barely ever reaches in but when he does he gets that ball he doesn't just go and whacking away at the other player when they don't have the if, if they're not in the position for him to be able to steal that ball so he gets nice and low, he uses his lower body and he is able to push up on the player without extending his arm. As soon as you extend your arm, it's going to be a foul, so you do not want to do that. So he's able to get nice and low and he's able to make that leverage with his forearm arm, and his, his, also his shoulder. Now, another way that he defends the post is by using his chest. His chest is of course very strong, but well, the reason why you want to use your chest and not your shoulders in some points of the game, let's say you're in the middle of the key. If you're in the middle of the key, the reason why you wouldn't want to use your shoulder is now you're forcing him to go in this way that I'm pushing with my right shoulder, you're forcing that player to go towards his right or your left, but if he spins, Let's say I'm the offensive player and I see that my defender is facing that way. I'm going to spin the opposite direction because when you're spinning the opposite direction and he's facing that way, he still needs to turn around. You now have the upper hand as the offensive player. Now, if you're against the baseline, you can do that because there's not much room left along the baseline for him to move. And if he does, and he does drive baseline, now you still have the advantage because now he has to battle the backboard and if you're strong enough to push him into the baseline a little bit more without causing yourself a foul you're going to be able to defend that baseline a lot better now another thing that kyle lowry does is rebounding and when he gets that defensive rebound the first thing he does is not dribble the ball even though he's a guard he doesn't look to dribble the ball right away he looks to pass so when he gets that rebound, he turns and he does not go and dribble right away to get down the court. The first thing he does is he recognizes the fact that the ball is actually faster than him dribbling the ball up the court. So the first thing that he does after he gets that rebound, he pivots, he looks at the closest sideline first because that's where the outlet player would be, and then he turns and he looks down court. This is when you're going to see him many, many times see players like Pascal Siakam and other players who are cutting down court. Terrence Davis is another one. And they'll be cutting down court and he's going to do the long ball and if you're strong enough to hit that pass or at least get it close to your player who's cutting down court, you're going to be able to get yourself an assist which is something that guards should have a lot of. Let's face it, they're guards, they're the playmakers, they're the captains of the court, they're the quarterback, they're the guy who's dribbling up the court and looking for players who are open to get them more points because being a one-dimensional scoring player is not going to help you as much as being able to be a pass first guard 
So the first thing he does is he looks down court. He looks for those players who are cutting. One more thing that Kyle Lowry does extremely well while on defense is taking charges. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips that he, what he does right now that allows him to get so many charges. Number one, he's able to beat his player to the spot. So if his player starts driving towards the rim, he's able to catch up by shuffling or maybe taking one to two steps and getting in front of his player, planting both of his feet and falling, and that's a charge. Now, another way he gets a charge is by playing help defense. So, on defense, if your player is over there and the player with the ball is on that side of the court, you should be playing what's called help defense. So if your player is out on the wing, you should be playing somewhere along this side of the key to be able to draw that charge in case that player was to drive. Now, a lot of players will see that player driving and they'll take a few steps up because they're afraid of their guy getting the ball. But Kyle Lowry doesn't do that. He actually plays true help defense. He takes a step in front and he takes that charge. Whether or not that player passes out to that wing player or your player who's out in the wing who's gonna jack that three point shot because he's wide open. Instead, Kyle Lowry plays true help defense, takes, his, that, takes that charge, and now it doesn't matter what that player does out on the wing. It doesn't matter if he drains that shot. That's a foul and it's gonna be your ball. Racks up a, a foul on that other player, racks up another team foul on the other team so you can get some free free throws at the end of the game. And your player no longer has a three point shot, no longer has three points to his name, and just did all that for nothing. So if you can get those charges by playing help defense like Kyle Lowry does, you're gonna become a much better basketball player. Another thing that Kyle Lowry does is he's not afraid to take a shot. So you're probably saying, and there's a lot of players and a lot of fans who I've seen comment on Facebook and on Reddit and all that who say, man, it must be nice having a player who's allowed to take whatever shot he's allowed to take from anywhere on the court. Well, if you're able to hit that shot, it doesn't matter if you're Kyle Lowry, if you're Steph Curry, if, if, if you're anybody, if you can hit that shot, your coach is going to allow you, generally speaking, to, to take that shot. And what Kyle Lowry is not afraid of doing is if he's hit two or three of those shots, three-point shots, or he's dro drove to the rim like two or three times and made a basket, he's not afraid to dribble down and just jack up a three-point shot without even running a play. Or by just running a simple, what I like to call, when I'm coaching a team, we'll have a play called one. And that just basically means one screen. It means if I'm holding up this hand, they're gonna be screening on that side, I'm gonna take a dribble on that right side, and I'm gonna jack up a shot. Now, I'm not, most of my players who I've ever coached about 75% of them, I say to them, hey, if you're open, take that shot. If you have got two, three, four baskets in, in a row, take that three-point shot. You've got the momentum, you've got, you've got the feel. And when you're shooting a basketball, this is not something about Kyle Lowry, but when you're taking a shot, and you can attest to this, if, you've been, if you're a good three-point shooter, if you have that feel, the, hey, this feels like it's going in all the time. It's gonna go in all the time and you're gonna continue to make those shots. And the more of those shots that you're getting in in a row, the better that feel comes in the game. And so if you're coming down and you can just say, hey, set, a, set that screen and you can cross over and hit that shot, then 100% go for it. So that is one more thing that Kyle Lowry is really good at. And that is, of course, taking that shot. You need to have proper shooting form, but of course, he's not afraid to take it. Now, his shooting form is a bit different. Kyle Lowry's shooting form, what you'll see is his elbow. So generally speaking, your elbow wants to be underneath the ball, and that's going to give you a nice straight shot. But he shoots almost like if that, that elbow was just a bit too far left. And how he's able to compensate for this movement and his elbow going in is by turning his body almost totally sideways to get that ball, that elbow straight underneath the ball. Now, I've always preached in all my other videos that you should have your feet straight, knees straight, hips square to the basket, shoulders square to the basket, take that shot. But if you've got a few tweaks or quirks that you just cannot get out of your shot form, then you can compensate for that. So if he likes to have his elbow too far underneath the ball, like too far left, then you can turn your body 
and this will now allow you because if your if your elbow is too far left the ball is going to go that way but by turning your body it's going to make it go straight chris boucher also does this as well he shoots with his arm out but he actually turns his body almost too straight towards the basket to compensate for that ball going out left and that's why he's able to still hit roughly 30 percent of his shots now if he was to fix a few things not shoot like this but bring his shot down he could possibly hit 35 to 40 percent or more of his shots but i'm not talking about chris boucher today i'm talking about kyle lowry okay so now this is the part that you've been waiting for these are the moves that kyle lowry uses so number one when he's driving towards the rim he usually sets up his defender to move in the opposite direction now some players will do a jab fake and kyle lowry's done this a few times where he'll do a jab fake but one of the moves that he does is an in and out dribble what I like to call a one-handed crossover, but a lot of coaches will call it an in and out dribble, which just basically means he dribbles in and out. That makes the defender think that he's gonna go in this direction, but ends up going right. So it's a very simple dribble. It's really good to be using your fingertips on this move, and that is just basically dribbling up, and then you can do an in and out. This ball is losing air because it's pretty cold out today, but in and out, and then you continue to go in that right direction. It's a very simple move all you have to do is have your hand push it over and then back without having your hand go underneath the halfway mark of the ball if it goes halfway underneath as, as soon as you do that it's a called a carry especially in an organized game not necessarily on street ball like we are doing today another move that he uses after he sets up his defender is once he gets past his defender he's gonna have a help defender come from one side or the other and when that happens he uses a spin move now a spin move is becoming more and more popular pascal siakam and pretty much three quarters of the nba uses this move the, these days but it's just basically you plant the inside foot of the opposite side that you want to uh, the same side that you want to spin so if i want to spin left then i'm put, planting my left foot and then i'm turning now if i don't pick up the ball you can still continue to dribble and he does do that move as well but if you pick up the ball, then you have yourself a shot. Or you have to go for a shot. If you don't want to go for a shot, then you leave the ball, you pick it up with the other hand, and then you dribble with that hand. So if you want to see that a bit quicker, you go bang, bang, and then you continue to go. And you can practice that move as well. Now, one of the best moves that I've seen Kyle Lowry do is even though he's like six foot, six foot one in that range, I'm six foot two, he uses a fantastic post move. And that is he dribbles into his defender, gets his shoulder into their chest or into their stomach if they're a bit taller, into their chest, and then he spins off. It's a very, very good move. And he does it from both sides. So he can go into, into their chest then he goes up with almost like a baby hook. And again, to do that move is still very simple. You take one dribble in, one step in. You don't want to go and push off. That would be a foul. You just want to go bang, shoulder up, and then spin. It's a very simple move. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another twice a day basketball video.